Hello everyone, welcome back to another session by K21 Academy. Today our expert trainer will be discussing about modern data warehousing. So let's get into the video. Take an example. You are in a team that is developing a chatbot. So if you are developing a chatbot and you are a part of a team developing a chatbot, it's an AI project and you are a data engineer in that team. So our aim would be to identify the data sources that could assist the AI team build the chatbot. They will train the chatbot. So when they develop a chatbot, they develop it on a knowledge base, right? They need a knowledge base. Knowledge base contains an intelligent FAQ, right? An intelligent frequently asked question bank, FAQs. We need to bring product manuals and sales manuals, which contain various information about the products and the answers to the various questions that the customers may ask the chat, right? Product manuals and sales manuals may contain the data about various things that our end users of the chatbot may ask to the chatbot. Similarly, you need to bring the CRM data. CRM data, customer relationship management data, particularly the customer service module right you have sales modules marketing module customer service field service project service retail manufacturing fno a lot of things are there in the crm module so we are interested in customer uh, service module we need to bring all the data from that customer service module we need to bring call recordings support Call recordings of support executives. Call recordings support executives. Correct? Support executives. So the support executives may have recorded certain calls for internal training purpose and quality management. Those call recordings may assist us. Right? And there can be other sources as well, chit chat data sources and so on and so forth. I want to just give you an idea, right? Chit chat sources. So the point is that as a data engineer in a chatbot team, our aim would be to locate the data sources from where the data would be valuable for the chatbot team to build the chatbot. Following that, we will have to understand the kind of sources that these are whether they are structured whether they are semi structured whether they are unstructured for instance faq documents frequently asked question banks are unstructured right they are free flowing text but you may have a question along with an answer so it appears as if it's a key value pair kind of a system a key is a question and the value is the answer to that question faq right so we will classify them into structured unstructured to understand what they are right so unstructured product manual sales manuals might be pdf documents word documents so again unstructured crm data which we may be semi-structured it may be in xml it may be in json right when you fetch it Typically, it happens in fetch XML if you work with CRM systems. Right. Call recordings. So these are your multimedia content call recordings. Right. So they may be in WAV format, MP3 format. And so on and so forth. Chit chat sources are again unstructured. This is also unstructured. So after identifying all the data sources what you typically do is the phase called as data integration right and what do we do in the phase called as data integration 
right what we do in the phase called as data integration is that we design the pipelines that bring that data right so you go and you bring the data all this raw data in a lake so you will use either azure data factory so you may use azure data factory so you may use adf azure data factory or synapse pipelines synapse pipelines as a data engineer to design the necessary pipelines that do centralization of all this data data for the chatbot right so you may develop proper pipelines that bring the data through this and put it in a lake stage it in a lake okay, that's how things work we put it in a raw lake we design now these two solutions provide you various enterprise connectors right if you have seen these two services you have 90 plus enterprise data connectors enterprise data connectors 90 plus enterprise data connectors so you can connect to any of the solution that you might be using for recording all these things in your company your client might be using and then you would be able to design as a data engineer the pipelines that essentially bring the data from those sources and stage it in a raw lake in a proper hns the hierarchical namespace HNS file system root in a proper hierarchical namespace root this is called as HNS hierarchical namespace following that what do you do now following that you do ETL extract transform and load from here so we know that the data is raw right so your ai team will give you the task first of all to identify the sources look at these sources understand the properties of them properly design the proper nice robust performant efficient effective pipelines to bring the data to the central lake of the company or the project and followed that following that there must be a way to bring it to a proper form and a shape as desired by your AI team. So to do that, you are gonna be using a mechanism to extract the data from here and load it as a data frame in your SQL data frame API of Databricks. So you are gonna be loading it as a df a data frame in the sql data frames api present in spark or let us say databricks now the question that arises is is this the first question that we ask is how do i author frames on the files contained here so the question one that essentially pop to our mind is how do we how do we create data frames and we will tell you what data frame is very shortly how do we create data frames on various file types that i ingested through pipelines in my lake on various file types that we ingested in ADLS Gen 2 using our data integration, using data integration pipeline, using data integration pipelines. This is the question that we are asking. 
how how do you author frames if we are clear about this then once we have a frame then we will be able to do all the advanced transformations on the frame so once the frame is authored then we shall be doing all the transformations on the frame right i'm going to say f for transformations functions right so you're going to be doing all your advanced transformations advanced transformations on the frames once we know that a frame is authored then we will be able to do advanced transformations on the frames and following the transformations what you can do is that you can put the processed data so the end here what you get is processed data and what you can do is up to you you may put it you may put it as files again so convert the processed data frames processed right process data frames here we had raw data frames we did transformations we got a process data frame choice is yours you may write it to the process lake of your project yeah not everything you are right we will not be able to author data frames on ev everything of here what key we can author data frames on that we will discuss i hope that's uh, clear data frames cannot be authored on everything right whatever we can author it on we will author it what we cannot author it on we cannot author it right so that's the uh, reasonable assumption that it's not possible to author obviously data frames on the call recordings you are right right so once the data has been processed then we will be able to put it in a processed lake so you will be able to go and put it in something called as processed lake processed lake back as files processed files or you may upload it to a spark warehouse spark table a managed table in a spark and that takes the dimension of modern data warehousing pattern which we will discuss in module 4 the module that follows this or what you could do is that you could put it into the managed tables in spark right so you may put it in managed tables in spark to develop a spark data warehouse right in spark so that would be a dwh model so you may write them as processed files on a lake or put it into the managed tables in a spark as a dwh that pattern is called as mdw pattern modern data warehousing pattern modern data warehousing pattern you studied in the dp900 module 4 i hope people had attended dp900 the data contained in lakes after proper transformations and whatever is put into a warehouse that is called as mdw modern data warehousing pattern modern data warehousing all right so we ask this questions so the module 3 that we are currently discussing aims to teach you or help you understand how do we create data frames on various file types that we ingested in the adls gen 2 using the data integration pipelines and as sujith has mentioned what file types are supported <laughs> right question 2 is what all types what all file types are supported what all file types are supported that also i need to know again microsoft provides us here a very beautiful content microsoft provides us a full catalog 
of notebooks i will share with you everything is practical so i will give you a catalog of notebooks notebooks means code teaching you two things read and write dfs on various file types practical content that if i have a json file how do i author a frame on it if i have an avro file how do i author a frame on it if i have a parquet file how do i author a frame on it data frame how do we convert a data frame to a file back read and write right so sujit had the correct question what yeah xml <laughs> all right so so here are some questions and then we are asking what can we do here question four what all transformations what all transformations can you do now the transformations are hundreds hundreds of transformations we will not be able to discuss all of them because of the limit of time hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of transformations hundreds and hundreds of functions hundreds and hundreds of groupings and aggregations and group by clauses and whatnot so the point that i want to mention is that the content is very vast it will take you your entire career to touch those transformations whenever you will require them you shall use them transformation data frame class spark dot data frame class let us we are coming to it let us hold our horses right so we are coming to it systematically we will go right now i am introducing the things to our people and then how do we implement this part that we're going to see in the module 4 the mdw pattern right now we look into this much from here to here right so the phase one phase two and phase three these are the three phases that we are interested in in our pipeline at the moment seems reasonable so guys if you liked our video then do give us a thumbs up but if you really want to learn more about the particular topic we discussed then we have something really special for you we have our free class on microsoft azure data engineer certification that is dp203 along with some question and answers where we'll be discussing about why is everyone working on data importance of some azure services you should learn and many more things so for that, all you have to do is just log on to k21academy.com forward slash Azure DE02. And after that, you'll be seeing a screen like this. Just click on book your free seat now. Select your event date whenever you're available. Reserve your spot by adding your name, your email address and your phone number. And you'll be getting all the updates via mail. You'll be seeing this kind of window on extreme right. So you can save this link. Add to your calendars and I'll see you in the free class. Till then, keep hustling and take care.